over death, over the grave, and um, it's just a, a blessing, you know, to, to have that. But power is what I thought of. Absolutely. Somebody else. Um, I, I think what comes to mind first for me is, um, love that God loved me so much, um, that he, um, you know, died on that cross and, and was resurrected and that love just encourages me when life is hard to keep moving forward. And that love also, um, you know, it helps me to strive to be a better person in my daily life. Absolutely. Thank you, Ann. Uh, I'll, if you don't mind, I'll chime in for just a second. You know, I think about the resurrection and I think about life without the resurrection. And, and in the times like that we're facing right now, I think it's even more important to realize that his death he did defeat death. He, he, he was raised for all of us. And it's through that faith that we have, that's, that's, where, that's where our peace and our hope comes from. Without that, you know, what kind of hope would we have? Yeah. Without him conquering death for us. And I think as all of us are nearing that day one day, that that's where I, that's where I find my comfort. That's, that's where the peace comes in for my life and for my family, is realizing that, through it all, he's already he's conquered it for me. All I got to do is be prepared to meet him and be be obedient. And I think that's the biggest part of my life right now is trying to stay the course and be obedient. Let's see. It. All right, thank you. Uh, miss seeing you, miss seeing you all. Good to see you all here. For me, resurrection. It is very important for all Christians. Because this is our assurance. Without resurrection, there's no Christmas. This is assurance to know that after this life, we will live eternally with God. That is, that is so important for all of us to know this day, the resurrection is, is, is a remarkable day for all of us. Needs to celebrate and need to tell others because <clears throat> without resurrection, no Christian at all. Absolutely. Thank you, Tim. You may go next. Somebody else. I will. To right. me, uh, the resurrection means victory over sin. And it means that uh, sin doesn't have a hold on us anymore. And despite all the sufferings in our life, we're promised uh, eternal life with Jesus in heaven one day. And I believe that uh, that empty tomb is what our faith actually hinges on. Absolutely. Okay, I'll take my turn. All right. To me, it's assurance. <clears throat> After losing both my parents, it really gives me assurance that I know I'll see them one day when I join Christ in heaven. Absolutely, Cheryl. To me, I think it's, resurrection means everything because it signifies you know, he forgave me for my past and he gives me power to live in this life I now live in the flesh. I can live through his resurrection power. And even because even on my best day, I'm going to mess it up. You know, and then it also means new mercies every morning, you know, because of him, because he lives. And he, when he died, he died for every sin I'd commit, past, present, and future. And, I, and it also means even when I die, I gain. I gain eternal life. And so to me, it means everything. It covers my past, my present, and my future. You know, and he is my rock. He's my high tower. He's my shelter, my refuge, my redeemer, and most importantly, my friend. And, you know, that's, that's what it is, what he is to me, and that's what he wants to be to everybody if we'll just trust him as our Savior. Because he lives, I can live. That's right. I'll go. I was going to say that uh, the resurrection means to me that um, he is the one true God. 
Um, you know, you can go to any of the other graves of all the other lowercase g gods, you know, and and they're still in their graves. But our Savior, he's not in there no more. Right. And I think that's that's uh, means a lot to me. I was <clears throat> praying with Bentley last night and was praying that last night. You know, thank you, God, for, you know, so that's what I think about when I think about the resurrection. Seeing your speaker's not working. Uh, well. No. Let's see if they can hear you now. I can hear you, Jessica. Okay. Did you hear everything he said? I can't hear her, but you can hear me. <laughs> no, I, I heard what I heard Ronnie just cut off at the towards the latter part of what you were saying after you talked with Bentley and praying with Brent Bentley last night. Uh, well, that's pretty much it. One true God, he's not in the grave. Yeah. Somebody else. I'll go. When I think about the resurrection, I think about forgiveness and how I've been forgiven. And I have to remember forgiveness not just comes from Jesus, and but it comes from all angles. I have to forgive because I was forgave. So it just, I use it as a building block in my life to forgive and to build up what I need. In, in people and how I react to people. And that's not the only thing I get from it, but that's one of the biggest things I get because I was forgave so I can forgive. That's it. Somebody else? For me, I said that um, for him, you know, Jesus dying on the cross, being resurrected, that reminds me every day that I have to die to myself in order to live a life for him. So that reminds me daily to um, die to self. Absolutely. Somebody else. We'll come back in just a moment if somebody else wants to to share. But let's go First Corinthians chapter number fifteen, and we're going to just pick up in verse number twelve. Um, Paul is addressing uh, the church in Corinth, who uh, undoubtedly there was doubt in the truth of Jesus' resurrection um, from the dead, and so Paul is writing to remind them that the resurrection is essential to salvation and to any hope of heaven. And so in an effort to awaken them, uh, the, the Corinthian believers, uh, to the importance of the resurrection, Paul paints this, this decimal picture. He paints this, uh, depressing picture of what life would be like if there was no resurrection at all. And so first Corinthians chapter 15 is what Paul says here. He says, now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain. Your faith is in vain. We're even found to be misrepresenting God. Because we testify about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true, that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. And you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ, 
have perished. Verse 19, if in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are, we are of all people most to be pitied. And so Paul reminds us that if there is no resurrection from the dead, that Jesus didn't rise again, if he's dead, then everything that we believe in comes crashing down around us. And if there's no resurrection from the dead, then Jesus himself is no better, as some has said just a moment, Ronnie even said a moment ago of the, the tens of thousands who have come before and said, man, that they come from God. And so Paul tells us that if Jesus is still dead, then we are wasting our time serving him. We're wasting our time worshiping. If Jesus is still dead, then you would have been better off just to worship a rock or go and worship a tree or go worship some other kind of a created image or, or being. If Jesus is still in the grave, then everything that we do is false. Everything that we do is, is phony or, or foolish. If Jesus did not rise from the grave, then all of our preaching is in vain is what he brings up in this text. And think about that. If, if this is not true, all those many times that we have gone to church, all those preachers that have come and, and stood before you and proclaimed the, the gospel message, all of it was just a, a big lie and just a, a waste of time. If Jesus did not rise from the dead, then we're victims of a, a cruel hoax, a, a cruel joke in that sense. If all of this is fake and Jesus didn't rise from the grave, you think about men like Paul, who beforehand, I mean, he was all about killing Christianity. He was all about killing Christians. But who on the road to Damascus, who God intervened into his life, and as a result of Paul surrendering his life to Christ, went on, as we read in the Bible in 1 Corinthians, as we read in, in Acts, that Paul went on to be beaten, to be assaulted, to be stoned, uh, to be left for dead, to be in prison, uh, to the disciples, to those uh, apostles. I mean, they did it for nothing if Jesus really didn't rise from the grave. And so the heart of the gospel it rests on the truth that Jesus Christ truly did rise from the grave. It rests on he was born of a virgin. It rests on that he lived a sinless life and died on the cross to pay for our sins, the sins of the world. It doesn't stop there because the Bible goes on to tell us, tell us that not just that he died, but also it tells us that he rose on the third day. In Romans chapter number 4 and verse number 20, 25, it tells us that because Jesus rose from the grave that third day for our justification. If Jesus is still dead, we cannot be justified and we're still lost in our sin. If he's dead today, then we're still looking for a redeemer. If he's dead, then we are all still destined to a real place called hell. But because we know that he is risen, it affects every part of our life. It affects the past, it affects the present, and it affects the future. And so the reason that I asked you guys this question and sent that to you is just, does the resurrection affect every day of our life? Listen, the resurrection, because Jesus truly did rise from the grave, it should affect everything that we do. It should affect from the time we put our feet on the ground to the time we go to bed at night, it should affect everything in between that and afterwards. The resurrection is very pivotal. One of the most important doctrines that we believe as believers, Christianity hinges on this fact of Jesus rising from the grave. And because Jesus truly did rise from the grave, what encouragement we have is what Scott started off with, Stacy started off with, with uh, about the power. That same power that rose Jesus from the 
grave is the same power that lives and dwells inside of us. But here's the question. Do we truly live like that every day? Do we truly live with that resurrection power in our life every day? Listen, the resurrection is not just something that we celebrate on Easter this coming Sunday. It's not just something that we celebrate with our families, but it's something that we celebrate every single day because we know and we believe that Jesus truly is alive. And here's the thing that we have to remember. What Jesus promised, he fulfilled. What he promised, he fulfilled and that he would do. My thought came to my mind that I was preparing for this tonight is, man, oh, what a Savior we have. Oh, what a Savior. Listen, the resurrection is the promise of God that all who trust Jesus will be beneficiaries of God's power to lead us in paths of righteousness and to bring us through the valleys of death. Believing in the resurrection means being confident of God's power. Being confident of God's power. And here's what that means. That means that we no longer fear and fear worldly loss. We no longer are, are greedy with money and gaining worldly gains. But the resurrection changes everything. Here's what it does for us. It turns our fear into love. It turns our despair into joy. It turns our guilt into forgiveness. Every Sunday that we get to get together as a church, we celebrate Resurrection Sunday because 2,000 years ago, Jesus rose from the grave. It changed from the cross of tragedy into triumph. John MacArthur, he claimed this, he said, the resurrection is the ground of our assurance. It is the basis for all our future hopes, and it is the source of power in our daily lives, here and now. He said it gives us courage. Listen to this. It gives us courage in the midst of persecution, comfort in the midst of trials, and hope in the midst of this world's darkness. Church, God wants us not to just believe in Jesus' resurrection. Yes, it's important, but we are to be transformed by this resurrection. And so how it affects us on a daily, how it affects us personally, it affects us in this way. Number one, from the past. It affects us from the past because all of us have sinned. Sin affects every single one of our lives. And because of the resurrection, we know that Jesus rose from the grave victorious over the power of death, over the power of sin, over the power of Satan. And we know that in our lives, that past is not just something that, that took place then, over 2,000 years ago. It still takes place today. Sin no longer has to grip us. We are no longer bound by Satan. We are no longer bound by worries of death because we serve a risen Savior. But so often we live a defeated life. So often we give in to the tactics of the enemy. So often we live in fear. Church family, man, you have no idea how good it is to be able to see you. How good it is to be able to just talk to each other through Zoom. But I want you to understand and I want you to realize the cause of the resurrection, we don't have to fear. I know what we're facing is very intense. I know what we're facing is, is a terrible virus. I know that it is very serious, but can I tell you, we serve a God who we can continually put our hope, our faith, our trust in our lives in. We don't know what's going to take place with this. We don't know when this is going to end, but what we do know is that Jesus is alive today, just like he was over 2,000 years ago. It affects our life from the past, but it affects our life presently. It affects it right now because the power that rose Jesus from the grave 
is the same power that lives and dwells inside of us. And I'm not here to try to, to preach to you some kind of prosperity kind of stuff, but I'm here to tell you that that same power, it lives and dwells inside of us through the person, the work of Jesus Christ. He promised to send the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is what lives inside of each and every one. So how is it that whenever we walk out our doors and have to go to the grocery store, how is it that whenever the, the bills continue to come in and we can't afford it, or, or how is it that when businesses are closed or we're losing our job, how is it that whenever, in spite of all this other stuff going on, we still have family issues that we're dealing with, we still have children that we're dealing with, we're still having different stuff that we're dealing with. Life has not just stopped completely because of this virus in our lives. Some of us are still affected by family members who are dealing with cancer, family members who are, are battling health issues in their life, who are a lot of things we are still dealing with and battling with. How do we keep moving? How do we keep going forward? How do we as a church keep progressing forward as we look at what's going on around us? How do we keep being Bethlehem Baptist Church right here in Buford? How do we keep doing that? And the reason and the way that we keep doing that is because we know that Jesus, that he is alive, that he is well. We know that he's still sitting on the throne. So the way that we keep moving forward, the way we keep doing church, the way that we're doing church, the way that happens is because we know that Jesus Christ is indeed in life. Listen, I don't have a clue what all of you are facing, but just as we got on the phone last night with many of you with the Zoom conference, and I man, we get on there on Fridays with our Sunday school class and uh, being in conversation with those on, on the telephone, many of you are still battling different things in your lives. And church family, I want to remind you that Jesus Christ is still on the throne. The resurrection, it affects our hope. If Jesus is not alive, then we have no hope. Listen, if the resurrection is not real, there's no reason for Zach or myself to stand up on a weekly basis and proclaim the gospel message. It would be futile for us to do anything of that nature. But because we know that Jesus is alive, and Sandra led to this earlier, the reason that we know that he is alive is something that Richard sang this past Sunday. The reason we know he's alive is because he lives within my heart. He lives within my heart. But the resurrection not only affects our hope, knowing that, man, we're going to face death, knowing that death is going to come. But our hope is not in facing our death. Our hope is in Jesus. But here's the other thing I want to encourage you with. With the resurrection, with the resurrection, it also affects our love for one another. It affects our love for one another. Through Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, we know through Scripture that Jesus displayed the ultimate sacrifice and the ultimate display of what love is all about. But in that same mindset of Jesus displaying love, he gave us that example of how we are to continue to love each other. Man, I, I just, I want to brag. I, I know that they're, they're not on here, but maybe they'll listen later. But I got to talk to Miss Brenda. And you guys know we have sewing ministry, pillowcase, and quilting, and that kind of stuff. And uh, I didn't know this until this week. Uh, Miss Brenda came in the office and was getting some stuff. And she said, you know, we're making masks to send to the hospital right here. I mean, just another avenue that our church is being able to love on others right now. I mean, I'm thankful for Zach and, man, our, our students who this past week made up some baskets for some, some senior adults and went to deliver those just to let you know that we love you. For those that have taken food to, to different individuals, church family, that's why and that's how we love because we know that Jesus rose from the grave. And lastly, I want to share this with you, is the resurrection that affects our, our view of suffering. I mean, right now, as we speak to anybody around the world, 
we're all experienced different aspects of suffering in different ways, but also maybe even in our own lives, we're, expect, we're, we're being affected by suffering. But here's what I want to encourage you with is this, is no matter how difficult this life gets, no matter how hard it gets, and listen to this, no matter if even in and through this, that the Lord Jesus says, hey, it's time for me to come back. No matter what hits us, no matter what comes our way, what awaits us is a real place called heaven and an eternity with the God of this universe who created us and who sent his son to die on the cross in our place. Through Christ, we have victory. Death no longer, as the Bible says, you go on and read through the rest of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, oh death, where is your sting? We have no reason to continue to be afraid of death because we know what awaits in a glorified and resurrected body as we get to enter into all of eternity together. And so my question then is this, is your living a reflection of the power of the resurrection. Is your living a reflection of the power of the resurrection? Listen, we celebrate the resurrection daily, knowing that Jesus truly is alive. And so Jesus, being alive, should affect everything about us. Many of our teachers, you're missing students. Many of our students, for the first time, I'm honestly and truly, for the first time in all of history, can I honestly say that a student's going to tell you they miss going to school? <laughs> and, and all of that, that craziness that we're facing, folks that are having to work from home, folks that are dealing with new way of life and, and living right now. Church family, I want you to know that we still live in victory. Why? Because over 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ rose from the grave. And so in our time of conclusion, we still have a few moments together. I wonder if there's anybody else that would like to just share testimony personally of just how the resurrection affects you. And so if you want to share, you share at this time. If not, I'm going to lead us into a a time of closing, but if there's anybody that, that didn't speak earlier and you want to share, then I want you to take that opportunity to do so right now. Oh, Mr. Jerry, be good. All right. Yes, sir. Guys, I, I appreciate you tuning in. Um, man, I'm telling you, uh, I truly miss each and every one of you, man. I, I love you guys tremendously. Um, and just being able to see you. Um, and Mr. Jerry <laughs> coming by, <laughs> he said, uh, Jerry said he's, he's been standing here probably for about the fifth, last 15 minutes. And he said, uh, where's everybody at? <laughs> uh, but man, I, I miss you guys. And so we're planning for this coming week. We're trying to be able to have drive in church and uh, I'll be sending the call and post out uh, verifying that. Uh, but as you're aware, just like I am, uh, last I checked, it's 90 to 100% chance of rain on Sunday. Um, and so we're going to make the best educated view that we can, decision that we can. Uh, and so it may look differently. 
Uh, I know Saturday's going to be beautiful. Uh, we're going to make some phone calls and just try to figure out the best way we can all come together, be able to celebrate uh, the resurrection together, um, be able to see each other um, from a distance in that sense. Um, but pray about that, man. Pray for us as we try to make those decisions um, and just want to be cognizant of everything that's going on around us. Um, I want to encourage you to continue to, to share love with each other. I want you to, to encourage you to continue to, to love each other, connect with everybody. Um, again, man, we should be able to call a couple people a day, three people a day, just checking on them. Um, you don't have to be senior citizens um, to be checked on. Amen, Richard. <laughs> um, well, let's check on each other. Um, anybody have anything they want to say before I lead us into a time of prayer? Miss Ava, are you doing well? I'm doing very good. Thank you for asking. That's good. That's good. You know what resurrection means to me? Tell me, Miss Ava. Resurrection means to me that one day I'm going to rise up and I'm going to be well. I'm not going to hurt anymore. And I'm going to see so many people that are having such a hard time. And they're just going to be walking and dancing and singing. Because I know that he rose and he promised me with that fulfillment of that prophecy that I will rise one day. And that's all I got to say. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Miss Ava. Anybody else like to share or add anything? Thank you. Hey, everybody. Hey, Ray. <laughs> I would just like to say hello to everybody. I miss everybody. And I would like to say be strong, be courageous, for God is always with us. Thank you, Miss Stella. Hey, Miss Stella. Hey, everybody. Go ahead, Ray. Say. You're on. You're on. You got to take the microphone on me? Yeah. Oh, hey, everybody. It's time to the sun just got a microphone on me. <laughs> Hope everybody's doing well. We're doing pretty well. Been beautiful weather lately. Hope it continues. Don't go as much as I used to. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, it's going to get better. That's right. It's going to get better. Absolutely. Anybody else? Rex, you got something to say? <laughs> All right, anybody else see anything? All right, guys. Man, I, I look forward to being able to see you. Uh, if there's anything we can do for you uh, in the midst of all this, um, Please let us know. Uh, thank you for, man, just for your support, your encouragement. Um, and man, we just remember, I appreciate Miss Stella sharing, we need each other. And so let's not forget that. Uh, although we're not coming here on Wednesday nights, we're not coming here on Sundays right now, we still live in the same community. We're not far away from each other. Uh, we still pick up telephone, contact, call each other. And man, I'm telling you, that right there goes a long ways. Um, so may we continue just to do that and just look for our opportunity to be able to display the love of Christ in everything that we do. So let's go to the Lord in prayer as we close in our time together. Father, I thank you so much for tonight. God, I thank you that right here where we're at, Lord, I thank you for the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you for how real he is. And God, I thank you of how you lead us, 
how you provide for us, how you protect us. God, how you walk with us every single day. And Father, I see all of these amazing faces, Lord, that were able to log into this place tonight. And God, it just makes us miss each other even that much more. And Father, I know that soon and very soon, Lord, we'll be able to get back together. But God, may we never forget. May we never move past cherishing what we have. Number one in our relationship with you. Lord, apart from that, Lord, we would be doomed. God, apart from that, we would spend eternity separated from you. But because of Jesus, Lord, every day we can keep pressing forward. And so, Father, may we daily cherish that. But God, may we continue to cherish each other. And God, my prayer is this, is that whenever all of this is over with, that God, as we get back to meeting in a building and continue to move forward as Bethlehem Baptist Church, that God, that we don't forget, Lord, how much we need each other. And God, how much we are all in this together. So, Father, I pray for the opportunities that we have during this time to share and speak the gospel message to those around us. That God will seize those opportunities. Father, I pray tonight for wisdom. Lord, in moving forward this weekend, we want to be together. We want to celebrate Easter together. Lord, just to be able to see each other. And so, Father, just wisdom in making the right decisions, even in, in the midst of all this virus that's going on, the right precautions and all that. God, we want to be faithful to you. And Father, tonight, I thank you that you are on the throne, that Jesus sits at your right hand. And Father, I thank you that daily, Lord, he intercedes on our behalf. Father, I thank you that today, whatever I face tonight, whatever may come my way tomorrow, that I can face it all because Jesus rose from the grave and he lives within my heart. Lord, I love you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Man, I love you guys. Thank you so much for getting on tonight. And I uh, hope you have a great rest of the week. And hopefully, prayerfully, we'll get to, um, even if it's from a vehicle, we'll get to see each other uh, this coming week. Hope you have a great night, and I will talk with you soon. Love you guys. Thanks, Pat. See you all. Bye. Love you all. Bye. Bye.